Hi, this is Peter from Pain, and you're watching Metal Dog IT. Okay, friends of Metal Dog IT, today we're here with Peter Tactor from Pain and Hypocrisy. You're more dewy dog? No, tired, but I live. <laughs> okay, well, the last time we met personally, it was in Bologna in 2000. 12, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, for you know, the Into Darkness Fest. Yeah. And uh, a lot of things have happened since then. Yeah. You've produced a new Hypocrisy album. You've done this project with you know, the frontman from Rammstein. Yeah. And you did so many other things, like producing new records and stuff. Yeah. I would like to ask you, well, is that weird for you? But maybe it's not to stay, stand still without doing basically nothing because you, you always have to do something. Yeah, um, I never stand still. When I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I like to be uh, creative, you know, because it's, for me it's very important to uh, get all the ideas out of my head, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, as soon as I get some ideas, then I really need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, do as you, with the ideas. Okay. Well, as you know, we are here today in order to talk about the new pain record yeah. called Coming Home. Yeah. I would like to start our chat asking you what about the album title? Mm -hmm. What about it? <laughs> what can you tell you about the choice, Coming Home? Yeah, it, it felt good uh, to call it that. And also, uh, I mean, it's mainly coming back to sit by myself <laughs> after doing two albums, you know, with the... Hypocrisy and Linda, so it really felt like uh, it, yeah, coming back to my ego trip. So to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what about the artwork? We know that you cooperated with um, Stefan Heilemann, yeah. which is a great artist to me yeah. because he's so talented and creative. Yeah. And I was almost. You know, my attention was caught up by the promo picture you've done mm -hmm. because it seems you're kind of interpreting some roles. I'm just me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I would like to ask no, you... It's, it's very simple. I would like to have a little bit more uh, cool pictures, not just this regular standing upside down and just yeah. a picture. I, I wanted to have something special. Mm -hmm. Not only, you know, the music you, you want, you know, the sound and the visual as well, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a fun thing to, to see how it creates and how it becomes something different from what it is, you know, and um, we all need to have a imagination, you know, and try to preserve that on, on the picture as well, which is really unique with the uh, highlight because, yeah, like you said, he's a very talented man, you know? mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, I've listened to the record, of course, and I have to say that my attention was caught up once again from, well, by this, the orchestral part of the album. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that every record by Pain is something, uh, how can you say, unpredictable, if we can say so, because you never expected something, you know, specific or... Yeah. So I would like to ask you, um, well, I was under the impression that the dynamic of the songs was kind of new in some way, if we can say so. I would like to ask you something about the, you know, the, the process of the composition of the album. Yeah. Um, the thing is, when, when you work yourself, uh, writing music, uh, I come up... It, Mainly, most of the parts, usually I always come up with my head, in my head. And then I try to get it down to, uh, into the computer, and then I start building around just this little small thing for 15 seconds. You know, you put on guitars, you put on uh, strings, you put on what, whatever you need to, to complete this 15 seconds of, uh, of the part of the song. And then you move to the next thing, and you do the same thing again, you know. You, it, it, it's a real big puzzle, that's for sure, you know? and uh, uh, it takes a long time to make a song. You know? And uh, in the past, you know, I usually always try to, uh, uh, when I come up with one, one part in my head, you know, usually I know how the song is going to end, but this time I, I kind of stopped after the first part and then I tried to 
renew myself, not going the easy way that I thought it would be. I really try to work to, to do something different, to really uh, put a new twist on everything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, would it be bad to say, to say, well, that this album was kind of influenced by your own, your latest projects, like, for example, Lindemann and the latest thing you've done? I don't know. I mean, I'm a part of that as well, you know. I think it's just another step for me how to write music, you know. Uh, me and Till, we taught each other from 25 years experience from, from each side of life. When we did Lindemann and we put it together and all of a sudden, we, you know, the Lindemann album came out, you know. And I learned a lot from that. And, uh, now I feel that I'm on, on a good path, a, a renewed path in my life. You know? So, yeah, I think, you know, music-wise it's going to be a little bit different from now on also, you know, um, because I'm not, yeah, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone to, to really do something different that doesn't sound like me. And uh, that was my aim. I mean, it's always going to sound like me, I guess, you know, but I was really trying to not get in my old footsteps. Okay, well, in order to, to introduce the album to your own audience, you've um, released two singles. Mm -hmm. The first one is uh, Call Me, which uh, sees the attendance of Joachim Brode from yeah. Sabaton. And the other one is Black, Black Knight Satellite. Mm -hmm. So um, it seems that this one, this latest one, kind of depicts this new album, if we can say so. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask you something, well, first of all, if you do agree with me, and uh, what, do you, um, what can you tell me about those tracks? I think those tracks are pretty... I think we chose them because they are most common pain sound on it, you know? The, the rest of the album, I think, has a different approach, you know? Uh, I didn't want to surprise fans like we did on, like, uh, Dirty Woman, you know, because people flipped out, they were like, oh my god, they think they're ACDC now. You know, it's just a different part of me. So, uh, yeah, we wanted to give them what they were expecting, you know. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, that's why we chose these two songs to, to get out first, you know, mm -hmm. to not to scare them away. <laughs> and uh, what about Star Seed? Because mm -hmm. I, I have to say that it is one of my favorite tracks of the record. Thank you. Because it has a, a, a certain appeal, if we can say so. So what yeah. can you tell me about this track? Um, I think it's this guy's fault, David Bowie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of brainwashed myself with Ziggy Stardust for four years, so... Uh, yeah. I don't know, I, I really... It was a very hard song to make, you know, and uh, it's... Very melancholy, you know, it's very dark, there's a lot of nice uh, string orchestra parts, acoustic guitars that I never used with paint before, you know, and uh, yeah, it, it feels like a trip, you know, and uh, I'm just singing about what I think happens, or not what happens, I, I'm wondering what is happening with your soul when you die. You know? yeah. It's a positive song on, on a very dark song. Uh, music-wise, but the lyrics are very positive, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm trying also to do that with a lot of songs, you know. Some songs sound very heavy, uh, but then you do a kind of a comic or funny lyric or yeah, tongue-cheek thing, you know. Mm -hmm. to, you know, try to change things around to see what happens. Okay. Uh, another track that is kind of curious somehow is the one called Absinthe Phoenix Rising. Yeah. It seems I have read somewhere that it has a weird and funny anecdote yeah. to that to the Nightwish tour. So I would like yeah. to ask you something about that. Uh, yeah, we had a day off in Leipzig and we went to this absinthe <laughs> bar and we were drinking for hours, only absinthe. And what happens, you know? Everything goes to shit. <laughs> um, I guess we got beat up and stuff like that and I woke up in the hospital with 10 stitches on my eye and, um, and then a friend of mine, he asked me like a couple of years ago, hey, why don't you write a song about Absinthe? And I said like, no, 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 Absinthe always ends up in, in, in uh, 
in a bad way, and then I went, aha. So this is my contribution to uh, Absinthe. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess the album will be supported by a proper European tour yeah. that unfortunately will not touch Italy. So yet. Yet, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I would like to ask you something about the, the schedule. Are mm -hmm. you scheduling something for our country? Yes. Uh, the thing is, we, we had five weeks that we could uh, uh, book in gigs, and I guess Italy was late to even respond to it. So the five weeks were booked. So now we have to uh, we do an additional part two in Europe, you know, because there's other countries as well that we don't go to that we need to go to as well. So uh, have no worries. I think in March it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, will be uh, the Vision Bleak the supporter band also for the part two or that I don't know. Okay. I have no clue about that. You know. Okay. Uh, let's see. let's see if they have time and let's see if uh, yeah how it goes. I, I really don't know. The only thing I know now is that they're starting to book that tour. So uh, we'll find out who's going with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, in your opinion, what is the most beautiful memory you have about the Italian audience and your Italian fans, or our country also? Yeah, uh, very dedicated people. As you uh, yeah, as we saw we in have an, Greek. You, yes, Yeah, exactly. unbelievable. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, what can you say? Italy is Italy, you know? It's warm, it's nice, nice people. Uh, a lot of great wines. Food. food. You got it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, since we mentioned Lindemann, mm -hmm. uh, there will be a part two for this project. Maybe. We don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to. Uh, it took us 13 years yeah. to get together, you know, to do this one, so <laughs> I hope it's not going to take another 13 years, you know. <laughs> so uh, it's, it, it's all a matter about, you know, my schedule and his schedule, mm -hmm. so uh, we have a lot of ideas, you know, laying around, both in our heads and in the studio, so we'll just have to see what, what's happening with Rammstein and what's happening with Payne and Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, waiting to see you in March, mm -hmm. I wish you all the best, yeah. or as you Swedish people say, Lika Til. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, as our tradition wants, I invite you to share the final words with your fans and our readers at Madame IT. Yeah. So, Italy, don't be disappointed that we're not coming now. We'll be coming in, in March, like I said. And I hope you enjoy the album for now. And there's going to be a few more videos, I think, you know, that you can check out. And also go out on uh, YouTube and check for live stuff. And, uh, hopefully we're going to bring a, a really good visual stage show. So, uh, stay tuned.